Today in the lab, disaster. Are you prepared? Today's episode is brought to you by Baby Bjorn. One thing you can depend on being safe all the time, Baby Bjorn. Brad, I'm going to go ahead and admit this to you. I am having some second thoughts about letting you talk me into doing a disaster segment. Why? Dude, people need to be prepared. Families need to be prepared for any eventuality. Think about it. Hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, just overall pestilence. What are you going to do? That's pretty much why. You're not prepared, that's why. No, I am prepared. I even brought in my disaster kit to show you that I'm prepared. What I have here is the Red Cross Emergency Survival Kit. You can go find this at www.redcross.org and get your own list to make your kit. Okay, Daddy Clay, do you have water in your kit? You need one gallon per person per day. Okay, water. I've got water right there. Here it is. Okay, okay. You have about water. 15 ounces of water. Yeah, yeah it's good. It's in my kit. There's, i got three kids, okay. one for each kit. Yeah. Boom, we're set. Yeah. What are you and Kim going to drink? We'll have wine. Oh, do you have non-perishable, easy-to-prepare food items? Yeah, right here. <laughs> this is all your food? <laughs> that's like space food, dude. That's like, <laughs> it's like a that's block like, of food. That's my food. Okay, flashlight. Uh, I am doing good in flashlight. I've got, uh, I have okay. not one, Ooh. but I have, I've got two flashlights. Wow. And yeah. uh, okay. let's see, they both... Um, they both work. Uh, battery powered or hand cranked weather radio or emergency weather radio. Are the batteries in there, Daddy Clay? Uh, I don't know. Does it have a hand crank? No, it's a. How are you going to listen to it if you don't have it the batteries? It has these really badass earbuds. <laughs> you don't have the batteries. Okay, Great. right Let's there. Okay. No, 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 I have batteries. Look. You have batteries? Yeah, I have. Extra I, batteries is on the list. Okay, extra batteries. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> right in there. Good luck. Do you think those batteries are going to fit? And this is not a NOAA weather radio. It's like a little Walkman from 1985. Yeah. First aid kit. You got first aid kit? I do. Right here. First aid kit. 30 pieces. You've got like some Band-Aids. Yes. That's awesome. Multi-purpose tool. I do. I bought this oh, tiny good. Leatherman. It's like okay. a junior uh, Leatherman yeah. in the kit. Sanitation and personal hygiene items. I have a rubber glove. <laughs> okay. And this is a biohazard waste bag. That's so I think you put, you poop in that. <laughs> family and emergency contact information? Uh, wait, I've got a brochure. <laughs> of your family information? As you can see, it's, it's got a not place. filled got, out. Well, I'll have a pen. Okay, great. Yeah, um, emergency blanket. You got some more poop I have this, bags. No, no, I have this plastic sheeting. Okay. And, and this, this duct, tape. duct tape. And you could make a sleeping bag out of the plastic sheeting okay. and the duct tape. Great. Uh, uh, surgical mask? Matches? Okay, wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. But I, I do. Yes, I have an emergency whistle. Mm -hmm. And I have surgical masks. That's what these are right here. Yeah. Do you have matches? No. You are going to make it, you know, like an afternoon. Okay. So what's your disaster kit look like there, Mr. Survivalist? Oh, dude, I could get along for forever. Let me see. Right, first, for sustenance, uh, get a big 20 pound sack of beans. And you don't want to eat beans without rice. Got some rice here. Okay. 20 pounds of rice. Okay. Got some evaporated milk. Will never go bad. And because disasters don't have to be bland, a big ass jar of jalapenos. Okay, disaster preparedness, I get it. Mm -hmm. I understand, but can we talk for a minute about this water thing? One gallon per person in the household per day for two weeks is what you're supposed to keep on hand? Right. For my family, that's 70 gallons of water. That's 560 pounds of water. Where do you keep that? Bathtub. Well, then where do I keep the Merlot? Dude, you're going to make it like a day and a half. If you'd like more information on surviving the impending doom, we encourage you to go to redcross.org. They've got tons of great information there. We also want to thank our sponsors, Baby Bjorn. They're Ecotech certified and safe for your baby, Baby Bjorn.
my god, baby! Oh my god, I'm coming with Yeah, calm down. Calm down. Are you videotaping? Yes! You're crazy. If the winds pick up, we'll get out and land this bitch. But I think we're going to be fine. Oh. My. God. You ran a fucking ditch? Oh my god! Yes, oh my god, oh my god, no I'm not! In a ditch. No I'm not! Yeah. I'm not getting out of the car! Get down. No I'm not! Stay in a ditch! No I'm not! Yes, Tina, there's flying glass here. We have to lay in a ditch. Oh my god, no I'm not getting out of the car. Baby, I'm not getting out of the car. Oh my god, oh my god, she really just sitting here. Yes, we should just be sitting here. And if the winds pick up and lots of shit starts flying, we have to get out of this glass oh enclosed. Oh my god. Kenya, we might have to get out of the car and lay on the ground. Oh my god. We are in a glass cage. Oh. Uh. Why are you rolling the window down? Equalize the pressure inside the car in case we have to open the doors. Oh god, I think it's coming near us. Looks like I got an accident. Generally, once we go under a tornado watch, the EMA will either notify myself or the police officers. At that time, we will open the shelter. If we have some information or the EMA has notified us that there's a possibility of, of severe weather, then we'll open it earlier. It started getting stormy about 2 o'clock in the morning. We came in. We went under a tornado watch. We manned the office all day. Uh, we went under several warnings. Every time we went under a warning, we didn't do our public alert notification, we sound the sirens at noon around 4 o'clock, I guess it was, when the tornado came through, we actually sounded the sirens about 15, 10 to 15 minutes before the tornado hit. And then as the day wore on and the sirens kept going off and so forth, at it, it, the 1.30 and 5 o'clock, the shelter was full, it was about as many as it could hold. It was rated an F5. It came into the county on the southwestern corner of the county. It stayed on the ground all the way through the county and it exited on the uh, northeastern part of the county. It makes it a lot easier because we do have a place that we can tell the people to go where they'll be safe. This shelter was open. Before we got this one, uh, we didn't have any place except maybe basements in churches. We'd go to either the Baptist church or we'd go to a neighborhood uh, uh, storm cellar in our neighborhood and since they built this we've been here I've been here six times since they built this. The churches all had their basements open and everything we had two churches that was destroyed in the tornado but it was roughly 300 uh, houses that was completely destroyed and probably 200 more that had major damage to it. The tornado was an F5. We have five shelters they won't be this large we have five that will go out in the county that is already approved by FEMA the bid has been let on them we we're just waiting on them to build we have eight more that has gone through the state and it's at FEMA now waiting on approval. I, I don't think there's any question that they should put more in you know here around close and, and out in the county too I mean it's uh, this is a something that this is the second large tornado in the last 30 years that's come through here that's taken a lot of lives, so it, it's definitely something that's needed. Well, he actually got down the stairs and something hit him and knocked him out. 
and he fell out here in the corner. Um, he had two big cuts on his head, one on his forehead and one on the top of his head, and two cuts behind his ear and his finger. When we found him, he was just bleeding real bad, and we brought him in here. Yes, it saved our life. Uh, just being in the basement, you know, I think people has to have a safe room. Well, my, my niece's husband, he just come in, he says, it's all gone. He says, down the road, never where it's all gone. Thanks, bye.